Hi, heroes. This is Stan Lee, but that's no excuse. I have a real treat in store, I think, for you, and I think mainly for me, because my guest is someone whom I've known for years, but I've never had enough time to really talk to. And I finally pinned him down, and he's going to be a captive of mine for the next hour or whatever it'll be. He's not only one of the most talented guys in our business, and in fact, in almost any business, but he's one of the most likable, one of the most humorous, and um, I don't want to embarrass him, so let's get right to it. I want you to meet Sergio Aragonis. Hiya, Sergio. Great having you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now it's up to you. I can relax and have a good time. Very good. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I guess it's my job to ask you some questions. I, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't know that you're one of the world's cleverest and fastest cartoonists that you've been drawing for MAD, and you also write the things you draw for years. You've been doing GRU for Marvel, other things. We'll learn about all of them. But let's first find out about your early, your childhood. I think everybody wants to know how people got started, where they were born, what they did. Mm -hmm. So your earliest memories. Oh, my earliest memories are, well, I was born in Spain, mm -hmm. and that was during the Spanish Civil War. So my family emigrated first to France, I went to school there. You speak French too, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. Uh, then from France we went to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And when I arrived to Mexico, I didn't spoke any Spanish. So being afraid of going out with the kids, I stayed a lot at home. Well, how old um, were you then? Uh, four, four or five. Uh -huh. And then I, when you are alone at home, you, you draw and you tell yourself stories. And uh, I think uh, when my earliest recollections has been a paper and pen and ink. <laughs> I was always drawing all the time since I since I remember, uh, yep. So you, you taught yourself to draw. You didn't study formally, did you? No, no, no. I, I don't think myself as, as an artist. Uh, I never went to art school. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, I'm a, I like to tell stories. And the only way I could tell them was drawing them. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm a writer that draws instead of be an artist uh, complete. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how to, to paint. I, um, uh, everything has been through development. When I want to draw something, I have to look how it looks and then practice it until it comes out right, then I can draw it. You, you know, see? it's very interesting you say that because most people who see um, Sergio's artwork, they see his cartooning, they think of him as a cartoonist or as an artist, and they feel someone else is doing the writing. But all these ideas are Sergio's. In other words, he writes what he wants to draw. He's created it himself in something like Gru, uh, if someone else puts the words in, but the story yes. is yours. Yes, of, uh, well, even going a little farther back, mm -hmm. um, I come from a pantomime background, mostly all the cartoons I do uh, without words. Even when I was in Mexico during cartoons, we'll, we'll talk a little more about that. Uh, when I went into comics, I started writing comics uh -huh. of all things, but not speaking English correctly, much less writing because I never learned English in school, I have always need somebody to help me with the dialogue. Yeah. And uh, so in the case of Gru, I write the stories and then with a very excellent writer, he's a Mark Evanier, uh -huh. he corrects all my language, we go through some gags and he edits and he does a lot of work, he writes all the poetry. But uh, I do write that. Uh, you know, speaking of language, I don't know if you know this, Sergio speaks five languages fluently, so he can not only be misunderstood in one <laughs> language, he can confuse you in five different <laughs> languages. <laughs> well, it does come when you travel a lot and then mm. you want to communicate. Then. And coming from a Latin background, all the languages I speak, they're You're related. Latin, are you? Really? Senior, uh, no one would ever guess. <laughs> so it's all, all related. Incidentally, so we have a couple of surprises for people later. We're going to see Sergio <laughs> draw. We're saving that for the end because that's one of the best for last. Yeah. Also, Sergio, you may have just mentioned a moment ago, he, I think he mentioned it very quickly, he had been a meme. And I hope I can twist, we haven't rehearsed this, <laughs> I hope I can twist his arm and get, us, get him to give us a little demonstration of his memeing ability. Uh, I'm a little too fat for that already. Well, when we get up and head toward the board, maybe no, you can do the, a little something. The thing with the pantomime is, when I was in college, uh -huh. I, I was in the theater group, and not because I wanted to become an actor, uh, all my friends were actors, so I would go and wait for them after rehearsal, and they would say, Sergio, you are doing nothing, come and start <laughs> acting, so I, I did that. But when 
Mm, uh, Marcel Marceau came into town yeah. in Mexico, and one of his, uh, the people who was in his tour was Alejandro Jodorowsky, which right. is an excellent writer. Also, he writes comics and directs wonderful movies, uh, avant-garde mm -hmm. director. He opened a pantomime school, so I figured out that for my drawings, it would be great to know pantomime, so I could understand physically what I wanted to draw. Right. So my entering to the pantomime school was more to learn the action that I wanted to, to describe on my drawings, but knowing them from inside instead of looking in a mirror or having to, to learn it so I, I could You could almost my body. say that you learn to draw from the inside out. That's, that's right. <laughs> and I don't know what that means any more than you do. Well, it, does, it has to do with equilibrium. Uh, if your characters are balanced and if you know what the position is and what the actions are, knowing them yourselves, then you can portray them. You know, it's an incredible thing because at first blush you look at Sergio's cartoons and they look so simple, but if you really study them, I'm glad you used the word balance, they are beautifully balanced and beautifully poised and the layout and the rhythm of the figures is beautifully done. Now, he does it automatically. I mean, you don't think consciously of that. I mean, it just flows out of you and it must be part of your, your meme background. Well, it also has to do with uh with when I'm telling a story, I transport myself there. So if I'm doing a, a street scene, I would like, I'm there. So the, I, I get into it and I would like to see the, the vendors and the mud on the street and the, the, the dogs barking. So slowly as I'm drawing, I'm figuring out the scene as if I was there. Could we, could we show a little of that from this Gru book? There are some great backgrounds in here if the camera can catch them. Yeah, I guess. Uh, well, here, here, this one. Okay. Now, go on. You point out the things you're talking well, about. Well, um, I don't know what. Which way? Which way should Gru hold oh, okay. the book? Okay. See, here, here we are. This is like a fair, and if you start, you have uh, the, the the minstrel who's telling the story, with a poem by Mark Evanier, and then you can see that they have jugglers and they have a bear and they have the little ladies there sitting some place waiting, like in a small town. Wherever so, you look, there's a little detail that can interest you. Yeah, and the you. vendors, they come with animals, and it's always something that uh, I enjoy, that if, if I had to be in that village, that's how I would like the village to look like. And what about the authentic stuff? Like, you have some boats there that are really beautifully drawn. Well, uh, uh, humor doesn't mean... Uh, there's a, uh, a separation of dichotomy here in, in gag cartooning and comic book drawing. When you're doing a gag, by format. You want total simplicity. You don't want anything that will disrupt from the mm -hmm. gag. You, mm -hmm. you want the gag that, when you look at it, boom, makes you laugh. Right. So any extra lines are not necessary. Be because you see that the gag is only one gag. Next pass, you pass something else has nothing to do with that. So you, you, your mind is clear of anything except the gag. You read it, it was clear, you laugh. Now when we're doing a comic, it is a storytelling. Now, now we want all the opposite. We want a lot of background. We want the people to feel that the character is moving in a particular place, that the ships belong to a particular era. Mm -hmm. Gru doesn't belong to any particular era because it's just a barbarian in a mythical world. So if I draw a ship that is a square rig, then people say, ah, oh, that's that particular period. So if you draw a, a Viking ship, then, ah, oh, he's a Viking. So you have to take a little of everything and invent your own ship, uh -huh. but it has to work. They have to get a feeling that is wind, that the, that the ship is going someplace, that uh, the character belongs there. So you create a little universe, but you have to fill it up with stuff so people are comfortable. And the soldiers have to look like soldiers, and uh, if he's a bad guy, he has to look like a bad guy, and all, the more you can add to it, the better. You gotta find that picture of the ship and show, because after, especially after what you, you probably don't know which book it's in now, and, well, uh, and you're not gonna be able to find it, and nobody's gonna know what you were talking yes, about. Yes, yes, it's in this one. Attaboy. This is the, the one with the slavers. See, this is known as a little dramatic Here. interval to keep your interest up. There we are. Well, Now look at that ship. It, uh, it, you look at it and say, oh, there's no such a ship. You know, if you have a Latin sail, you don't have this type of ending. Uh -huh. Of course not. <laughs> but that's in <laughs> purpose, it's not that. Because then it, it, will, it will put the ship in a particular period of time. But it looks real time. looking at it. Well, It's uh, believable. Also, one thing I do is before I start a story, if it's going to take place in a particular uh, setting, I draw the plan first of it. Uh -huh. Then I, I place the houses and then the, where the mountain is going to be and where the action is going to take. I do a little schema, a, sch yeah. a schematic, schematic drawing of it. And when I'm drawing my backgrounds, then I look 
where I have placed my point of view, then I know how to do in the background without having to, oh, what goes there? Or where yeah, are they facing? I understand. So I can follow it. And this is, no, he couldn't be there because there's a mountain over there. Then I look and say, oh, that's a, thing. It's, that's a lot of fun. I really have a, that's how I, I think, enjoy myself. I think you probably enjoy drawing as much as anybody I've ever known. <laughs> I think it's the most fun you feel you can have. Let me ask you this. You've done, you've been with MAD for many years, haven't you? Yes, since 1962. Yeah. How did you get started at MAD? Well, I, I have already been working as a professional in Mexico for many years, and I have always gone to, um, to see what was happening all over the world. We get cartoons from Mexico, we get uh, Argentina, uh, Europe, the mm -hmm. United States. And when I was, I didn't know that much English, I was trying to learn it. Uh, I read a lot of cartoons from Spanish uh, yeah. background, and I always, wanted to expand my horizons. I want to go to Europe and become a cartoonist over there because all my pantomime cartoons were more or less um, inspired by European, uh -huh. by French cartoonists. But I also love the comic books. And I, it was a <laughs> both, again, what both routes to take. But I didn't know that much about comics. The only thing I, I knew about comics is the stories I made. Mm -hmm. So I decided that one day somebody told me how much money an American cartoon is made. You know, this is America, America <laughs> here I come. <laughs> that what happened is that in Mexico, we were paid proportionate to what a syndicate gets paid for a cartoon. So you go to a Mexican magazine and it says, well, I want to get paid for this. It says, well, here is one dollar because that's what we pay for this reprint yeah. from the best American cartoons. Right. Right. So the only way was to come to the States, get your original pay, and then send your cartoon to Mexico and get your dollar back. <laughs> so I came uh, to the States uh, looking for, and I had a lot of material already published in Mexico. I've been working for many years, yeah. all through, through school. And so when I arrived, it was very hard. I went to New York. I didn't know anybody, but nobody. And I had literally $18 in my pocket. That's, so it was very scary. And one of the problems I had is that the word syndicate means union in Spanish, sindicato. So I figured out that to publish in the United States, you have to belong to the to union. union. Oh, so because all the cartoons say syndicate, sindicato. Yeah, yeah. You know? so and you I, thought they were all unionized. Not only that, they, were, they would work as agents, yeah. sending your work around. So I keep going to the syndicates. It says, I want to belong to the syndicate. <laughs> 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 so, so does everybody. But um, after so, a cartoonist I met says, no, Sergio, that's not how you work. You have to go to do the rounds. So I start learning the, the ways of how uh -huh. American cartoonists function. And the $18 was starting to dwindle. Oh, a long time. They have gone. I was working in the village as a, in a coffee house. I was uh, reciting flamenco poetry really? in the village. Oh, yes. Yeah, so doing anything to get some money. Yeah. Uh, but eventually, everybody says, Well, your cartoons are very crazy. Why don't you go to MAD? You know? But I knew MAD. I have been a, a fan of MAD in Mexico. But I knew they didn't publish cartoons, they published mm -hmm. satire. That's right. And, and incredible drawings. So I knew there was no way I could ever work there. But I had to do it because everybody says, you have to go to MAD. So when I went to MAD and, and they look at the cartoons, they saw it as an article. They, they, I had probably, I don't know, 40 gags about astronauts. So they took it and they made a two-pager and says, well, we have bought two pages of gags. About astronauts. About astronauts. So they call it a mad look at the United States space effort, something uh -huh. like that. So that was my first article. And they make the mistake to tell me, well, mi casa es su casa. I took it literally, <laughs> and I was there the next day. You know? <laughs> they couldn't get rid of you. No. Well, uh, one of the editors, uh, he, when I, I went out literally with, with, I remember exactly, th then they were paying $50 per, per page for art and $50 per uh, page uh, for a script. Yeah. So I got $200, you know. And probably that $1 for oh, uh, back it was from like, Mexico. Whoa. But what happened is they told me, well, come and bring, bring another article. And I told them, like, what? They said, well, you have a couple of gags on motorcycle cops. Do something about motorcycle cops. I went to the hotel. I didn't sleep. I worked all night long. And at 8 o'clock next day, there I am with, uh, with another They said, we didn't gags. mean it so soon. No, no, but they didn't <laughs> buy it, you know. Yeah. And, um, and also, uh, I had so much I, well, to make the, the story short, because we can talk here for hours, is that. It's OK. Uh, the first issue that my work appeared on Mad, had the cover was my idea. Uh -huh. I had the marginals in every, about 20 of them, and two pages. Are you article. the one who started those marginals? Was that your idea to do them? I'm I sure you all, know, you all know what we're <coughs> talking about. Sergio does.
these little drawings in the margins of Mad Magazine, which are known all over the world. Did they tell you to do that, or did no, you no, suggest no, no. that? I, I suggested Really? That. What they had yeah. on the old mads, there were little signs uh -huh. related to movies. They were very clever. But every time I asked, uh, or Nick, or Jerry <laughs> the Fuji, the editors, uh, Nick Meglin, I asked them what it means. He says, well, did you see that movie? And says, no. Well, then it won't make any sense to you. And then I will point another one. You, but, uh, it were puns on words that, that they were very uh, old and they uh -huh. didn't make any sense. Uh -huh. So I asked them, why don't we make drawings? And they told me it couldn't be possible to have pantomime cartoons so small without any words. So I says, yes, no. So I did it. <laughs> I said, well, we run them until you run out of ideas. And so far, it's been 30 years, <laughs> every issue without missing one. So the whole thing know? was just your idea. Well, yeah, for the drawings. Yes. And it's certainly one of the most popular features in Mad Magazine. Oh, I think that's great. I still get people who find it for first time and say, oh, I didn't know they had and they have to go back to all the issues <laughs> to look for them. <laughs> well. And, and what about what you're doing today, Sergio? What are you doing mostly today? <clears throat> well, I'm still doing MAD. Uh -huh. I'm doing the pages. I'm doing pocketbooks. Once yeah. And I'm doing Drew, uh, which is the, the, the monthly mm -hmm. comic. And right there, I have about 14 hours of <laughs> day work. What, I do some cartoons for, um, uh, for syndication also, like the astronauts. And uh, this cartoon does in background with a fireman. Oh, yeah. And that's a uh, weekly page that gets published as a, as a filler up in s uh, some of the European uh, uh -huh. groups. Uh -huh. Well, you're pretty big in Europe. You know, it's a funny thing, speaking of Europe, with all the work you do, luckily you're so fast that you still find time. You've been around the world a lot mm. of times, haven't you? Oh, yes, yes. I, Are there any countries you haven't been to? Australia. I haven't you had never a made, chance. I want to go there, too. Maybe and we'll go New there Zealand, together sometime. New Zealand. Too. Yeah, I want to do that. Yes, I'd, um, it's been a curiosity all my life, uh, trying to see the places that I have mm -hmm. read in books and how they really look and the people yeah. and the costumes and costumes and everything has been a fascination for me from the beginning. So from early time I've been just moving from one place to another and going all over. You, you also take trips with MAD. I believe once a year they take an annual joint oh, somewhere, right? Those are famous. Yeah, every year Bill Gaines, the uh -huh. publisher, uh, uh -huh. invites the whole staff and uh, we go to, uh, we've been in Africa, Russia, Morocco. That's terrific. Name it yeah. and we've been in it and yeah. it's been wonderful. It's a way to see all the other artists and to really communicate with them, and uh, it's been one of my best experience ever, because for 10 days, 14 days, you share uh, uh, your meals and everything with people that I have admired all my life, mm -hmm. and they, they are, they're my friends now. It's yeah. It's like sitting here, you know. <laughs> well, that's the way I feel, having a guy like you over <laughs> here, let me tell you. Now, what about the sea? I have a feeling that you're really into water. You've been a diver. Yes. A, you had your own sailboat. Yeah. There was a third thing that you told me once, and I've forgotten what it was. Oh, no. We'll think of it. The there was a third thing. The <laughs> aquatic ballet. The diving. Aquatic ballet. Can you imagine this clumsy guy doing aquatic ballet? I was thin I'm one kidding. time. I'm kidding. You're I not clumsy. Thin yeah. Yeah. Tell I us about thin. it. Uh, that was a way to... Um, I have always been a swimmer, and uh, uh -huh. I like the water. And it started when we were in the university. Yeah. Uh, one day they had closed the, the swimming pool because uh, they had all these girls who were on an aquatic ballet team and all the guys we were sitting on the, on, the, on the stands, you know, they couldn't even go swim. I says, what happens? Yeah. They have this selection for aquatic ballet and all the girls that didn't want any of the boys. I says, I'm going to swim. So I tell, told the, the guy who was there that I was part of the swimming team, the, yeah. the aquatic ballet, and I went to the lady in charge and says, I want to belong. And I... I started, I was been diving, and I was a clown. Well, I was going to say, clown. weren't you a clown? Yeah, I, that's what I did. I did funny dives yeah. with a big striped suit. And I could do that because I'm a rotten diver. But I guess <laughs> if you're no good, it doesn't come across funny. You have to be good at it in order to be funny bad, don't you? Uh, the only thing you have to be good is you fail bad, it's going to hurt a lot. So <laughs> if you know how to fail, then, then you save a yeah, lot. Yeah, I know what thing. you mean. And the, the boat was, was a dream, always the, the perfect dream for a cartoonist. I want to go in a sailboat an anchor in a little island and put a canopy on top and, and write their ideas. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, by the time you can do that, the, the boat doesn't work, there's no wind, <laughs> there's a storm. The, the dreams are different of it's the funny, realities, yeah. but it's a lot of fun. And I mm -hmm. think that's the dream of so many artists and writers too, either to have a little island or a little mm -hmm. mountain cabin somewhere where yes. I could be alone and create, and it never sort of works out right. Because creation comes believe it or not, of, with contact with people. 
I'm never more comfortable writing than when I'm in a coffee house. I get oblivious of what's happening around me, and you see people passing by, colors, yeah, movement, yeah, yeah. different things, and all that gives you ideas. Uh, and contrary to a writer that writes a book that takes him a year and a half to write one book, mm. we have to write one book a month. That's right. And That's the, right. The, the different it is, the better. I so often say it's, like, it's almost like doing a motion picture. Oh, yeah. One after another, yes. you know, and people don't realize the thought that goes into it and, and the storytelling ability you have to have because it has a beginning, middle, and end, mm -hmm. just like a movie. It has subplots. It has building up to a climax. It has to be paced correctly. Mm -hmm. Everything is like doing a screenplay. Yeah, it is a total parallel. Uh, you are the director. You're mm -hmm. directing your actors. Mm -hmm. you're, you're casting. You're do directing uh, dresses, uh, backgrounds, editing. Even the camera work, when you have to place what is a close-up and the guy's talking more. Yeah. But many movie makers uh, uh, in, in Europe read comics. Okay. Uh, Akira Kurosawa wouldn't even think starting his movie if he doesn't have done a storyboard. Yeah. Uh, René so Alain René is a fan of comics and many, many authors. Yes. Alain René, he came to yeah. see us years ago and he said he had learned to speak English reading comics. Right. Sure, I recall that. Well, you're in a great position because if you think about it, you write you draw, you've been an entertainer, and when you talk about the cinematic quality of movies, you were even involved in television. Didn't your dad have a studio <coughs> in Mexico? Well, he was a producer. He, producer. he was in the industry, and I grew up in it. Yeah. Uh, the first jobs that I had is when my father saw me, and said, what are you doing right now? I have a vacation. He will take me to the studio and I will work, or helping the editors <laughs> rewinding uh -huh. things, or putting dresses on the storage, or building wax bottles. Yeah or painting a set, you know, it was always uh, keeping you busy. Yeah. And in the meantime, you're absorbing all the information about putting oh, yeah. things together, show together. Well, I will always escape, and if they were making a Western movie, I will get my <laughs> guns and play in a real <laughs> cowboy set. I fell on the street all the time, like I'd been shot. Yeah, You've acted, fun. haven't you? Yes, yes, that was... Um, everything is related. You yeah. cannot be a writer or a cartoonist or a musician without being an actor. You have to act. And it's like an animator. I, I done animation, and what it has helped me more in that is the fact that I have acted because you can you you, you feel your movement. And acting has been because, or because I have known the director that we were doing. I was doing the writer first, and the writing and yeah. laughing. I was hired yeah. to do six specials with George Slaughter as a writer. That's right. And I to remember do the, uh, yeah. the animation for it. Yeah. Well, what happened is I did a. I, I was doing my gags as a storyboard. So when we sit in the meeting to, for the guy who designed the clothes and the makeup and everything, mm -hmm. they will go through the script and this is who's going to do this and who's going to be cast and that. So when they went to my script, he says, uh, who's going to be the general here? <laughs> so the producer, George, looked at it and says, well, Sergio just cast himself as the, as the general. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. The guy, very normal, took me That's to, great. to put yeah. a suit and makeup. So I was suddenly part of the, of the team. The funny, the funny thing is, I guess acting is really a part of life for everybody. I mean, for instance, me, right now. I mean, I'm acting as though I'm really listening to what you're saying, <gasps> as if I'm interested in what you're saying. I think I'm putting got a great performance yes. and no one is ever going to know it. You it was know so that? natural. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, I got something else to tell you. I don't know if you remember this. I have a little picture here. I don't know if you've looked <laughs> at it yet. Oh, you've right seen it? Uh, you did this. I, I happen to be one of the million people who has a Sergio Aragonis <laughs> original. Shame on you. I've only got one. And this is not the original. It's a Xerox of it because I have your original under lock and key at <laughs> home. You see, I only look at it once a year <laughs> on special occasions. But we were at a dinner somewhere. I, I don't recall. And we were with a guy named Captain Sticky. Do you remember? Yeah, he was, I was. He was a guy, a, a heavy set guy who dressed up in a superhero costume. And I forget what the he reason did, he, was. He throw, um, he had so like a uh, complain about if there was too much pollution in a place, he will go and smear everything with peanut butter right, or something. That's right. That. I had a, he was a do-gooder in real life. Yes, and he was. A, he had a gun that shot peanut butter, that's or marmalade, right. or something. and jelly. A jelly. That's it. To to the, to places. He was a were, funny guy. Yeah. He got a lot of rides. Well, anyway, I was sitting next to Captain Sticky at this dinner, and you were there, and I see you sketching it uh, for about twelve seconds, and then you handed this to me, and I don't know if the camera can catch it, but that was me <laughs> sitting with Captain Sticky and he wrote, Love Aragonis, and to you it meant nothing, but to me it's a treasure, oh, an artistic you, treasure. Now, 
think, speaking of art, I think it's time now to get you, I mean, you've had all this fun talking, which is easy. We have to get some work out of you now. We have a drawing board there. That's easier. <laughs> but while we get up to go to the drawing board, is there anything you can think of to show us a little of this meme ability of yours? Well, it was a... Is there a way to walk to the board in a funny way or something? Yes, but it, w it would be like the thing with when you're yeah. pulling from a rope, an invisible rope, and, you're going, and it goes suddenly like that. Great, you know, that's like great right there. And they're pulling you away from yeah. the Hey, wait a minute. You see, but so we weren't kidding when he said he had been a meme. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It takes, it's difficult for television because uh -huh. you already have like a glass of it. That's why you never see pantomime on television. See, when you see it in person, you can fake everybody like they have a, a glass thing that they're moving around. Yeah, yeah. But the glass is there on the television, so oh, you know, I see somebody what you breaks mean. that. Yeah. The whole yeah. thing I never thought it. of that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, anyway, we got a little bit of acting out of you. See, I didn't want people to think that what I say isn't the gospel. I've see. been acting also the whole time. I, have I to know. It. Yeah. You've been trying to act as if you're interested <laughs> also. Okay, on to the drawing board. What do you say? Hey, maestro, now we've got the best part of the show coming up. At least it's the best for me, because you're going to do all the work, <laughs> and I'll just stand and watch you. And what could be better than that, huh? Be fun. Um, listen, Sergio, you know, so many, for so many years, people have said what a fast artist you are. Are you really that fast? Give a demonstration uh, of how fast you draw. Instance, if I had to draw a... Oh, wow. Hey, oh, my. See, if you have Look to draw like at that. That. See, that's how a, a serious oh, guy have to draw, you know. Sure. But now, <laughs> let's stop kidding around, huh? <laughs> no, no. A, a serious artist would draw like this if I had to draw it down. <laughs> See, this this would... What's, what's yeah. taking you so long? <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's just generic cartoon, you know. I mean, Son a, of a gun. Well, the, the difference is when, when an artist th that draws the serious comics, uh -huh. say a hand, uh -huh. well, the hand has to look like a hand, the guy has to study anatomy, and the hand has to have certain proportions, you know? Right. But when you draw in a cartoon hand, this is a hand. Yeah. See? Or this is a hand. Funny thing is, so I think this, this looks more like my hand <laughs> than that one does. I, yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, faster. Cartooning lends lent, to speed. Uh, now, you do mostly cartoons. How would you do, this ought to be fun, how would you do a superhero if you were doing one? Well, first I would start with a, with a generic uh, face, uh -huh. which is cartoon face, you know, confidence high. Then I will have to give him a cape, because all, all superheroes have a cape, and then big muscles. <laughs> Those are big muscles. Well, I should have known. cartoon form of big muscles. <laughs> then I've got to give him some tights. <laughs> You know, and then uh, very skinny legs, because all, all my cartoons have skinny legs, you know. And then uh, he will be grabbing a villain, you know, like this, and the villain will look kind of like this, you know. Oh, that's terrific. Do, do you, when you, when you work at <laughs> home, is this the way you draw? I mean, do you sit at a board like this with a magic marker? No, 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 no. This I, is just for the show. Yeah, I, you, you have to draw much smaller. Yeah. You know, you draw, uh, Do you draw actual size? You don't draw it the size that it's in the book. Double size. Double size. Double the um, size it is in the book. There's a cartoon on that side uh, that I do for, for Mad Magazine. You know, I'd time. like to show this. I, this is one of the funniest things I have well, ever seen. Yeah, that's, that's the size I draw the cartoon. Okay. So this is the actual size you draw. Yeah. But besides being an example of the actual size, I've just got to show this gag. Now here... Here is obviously a woman who's been captured by cannibals, and they're gonna they're gonna cook her in a in a uh, <laughs> pot, right? Okay. Now that's a very tragic rendering, and we're all worried as we look at that, and we wonder what's gonna happen. Luckily, here here's somebody like Tarzan, who hears the call, and he's obviously coming to help. And here's the punchline. This is the gag. He's standing in line with the other natives holding his knife and fork. I mean, I, I think that's just great. That is a typical Aragonist. And I think it's a great example of how you as a cartoonist are a writer because you dreamed up the gag. I mean, you wrote the gag as well as drew, drew it. Uh, and uh, you don't need any words for it. You uh, surely don't. Uh, the pantomime will express the, yeah. the, the whole thing. But that's really true. That's one of my favorites. But that's the size I draw. And also because of the, the cleanliness and the sharpness of the line. You have to draw always double. The only thing these things is so you can capture, for instance, when we're talking about expressions, uh -huh. and you try to tell somebody about a, a cartoon expression, then you can go from, from a very subdued face that has no expression whatsoever, 
and then to a surprise face, for instance, you know, like, whoa, the super exaggeration in cartoon that is so necessary, you know, or, or, or laughter, you know, <laughs> you saw, like, <laughs> you have to go all the way around the total exaggeration, a little tear coming out, <laughs> so expression is what makes a cartoon. If you don't get an expression, for instance, a guy is sleeping, you know, a little nose, <sighs> you know, the, um, the hand, like, uh, it gets like yeah and the same expression can be done with any animal if you join a human being but if you join a dog and you want to make him laugh but it's the same thing you know dogs laugh like people laugh in cartoon when land a cartoon. Yes. sure they birds yeah. laugh the same way <laughs> <laughs> you get the teeth and everything yes because it's, it's a cartoon you see cartoons have the great advantage that you can draw anything you want and it wouldn't make a difference. If a serious comic book artist is drawing an elephant, and if he doesn't look like an elephant, he's going to be considered a bad artist. In cartooning, the, the drawing makes no difference. Or you it's a joke. You, know? you have to draw something with a trunk and big ears and, and stumpy legs, and it'll be an elephant. Right. But that doesn't mean that if you are starting your career, you have to look at a lot of elephants to understand their principle, you know, I mean, their, their mass, their volume, their, uh, their... Um, uh. But, you know, it's a feeling, and to me, it's just like when you were talking about being a clown. You remember when you were a swimming clown? Yeah. You have to be a good swimmer in order to be able to look funny, just like a rodeo clown has to be a really good rodeo star in order to do what he does. Now, it seems to me you've got to really know what an elephant looks like in order to do a cartoony elephant. Yes. The same with a boat, the same with a man, the same with anything. But so it's not quite as easy as it looks. The, or the, you make it look incredibly easy, I must <laughs> say. The, the, you, you have to learn perspective uh -huh. for the, the doing the balance. You have to learn architecture so the, the houses look like a period. Then you can redraw it. When a lot of people say, well, draw a train. Yeah. Well, first, the first thing I do is go through a book of trains to look how a train looks like. Then I, sometimes I build a model of a train, or I go on to look at a train. You have to total get into wha how a train works. Then you invent your own train, because now you know the elements and how they function. You start from the front. You know they have a little light over here, or that light sometimes is here. And then you ha they have a a big cow, uh, catcher. cow catcher and then yeah. you know they have two steam things that propel the wheels and they have <laughs> two little wheels then they have a chimney you know so you you are talking to yourself to describing that locomotive see but you have seen that locomotive before many times because you have to draw <laughs> it you see that's just insane so then what we said before was right you have to know it before you can do it of in course. a cartoony way, you've got to know what the thing is. There's no magic in, in this. The magic comes with a lot of practice. And well, it, uh, when people say, oh, Sergio, you can do it because you're a genius. This is, you are underestimating eight hours a day for the last 20 years <laughs> of practicing and many hours in the library. That's the genius part of it, is that you research and you practice. Well, maybe you'd be more comfortable with the word talent rather than genius, but mm -hmm. there are many, many cartoonists and many fine and good cartoonists, but there are very few who draw like you. And I, I have the greatest respect for anybody who has his own style, who can do something that other people do, but he does it in his own individualistic way. Now, I don't know anybody who draws as quickly as you, and I don't know anybody who really draws the way you draw. So I think <laughs> if that isn't genius, it's certainly talent. No, no, no. It's just a lot of a practice. A rare talent. A lot of practice. A lot of practice. And of course, this is as nice as I'll ever get to uh, for you because the cameras are on you and everything. <laughs> when we're alone, we can really get on it and I'll tell you all the mistakes you made over there and so forth. <laughs> but that train was really great. You're not slowing down. You can keep doing... Hey, do you remember, do you remember once um, I, we were at a roast? I think oh, it was yes. it for Harlan Ellison, Harlan Ellison. Do you remember? Yes. And I was one of the guests, and I made my little speech. And I saw you. You had a flipboard, uh, uh, be, uh, an easel behind that. And all the time we were all making our speeches, you were sketching. And it was the most frustrating thing, because the audience could see what you were sketching, but none of us on stage could. Well, what is it you were sketching I during that I was sketching road? whatever people were talking about. Uh -huh. Like, if you were talking this story in the rows, I will be drawing you trying to see me. I will be here drawing that anecdote that you just described 
I will be just doing this as you're talking about <laughs> the story. Yeah, there we were during, at the roast, and, then you, and you were standing back there with yes, an easel. And, and I didn't know what you were doing. You'll be <laughs> trying to look back. Oh, you, you didn't get my strong macho chin in there, but that's okay. Hey, that's sure gr is. That is great. That and is then terrific. Being, uh, the other people, they were uh, science fiction. They were. Uh, <laughs> talking like, you know, there I was drawing now I'm gonna show you that was uh, what I was doing over there just uh, uh, don't throw it away yet I want to show you how opportunistic I am could I see how you sign your name what does your <laughs> autograph look like okay now instead of throwing it over there at a boy Stan I think oh, yes, yeah, yes. Stan will do it <laughs> yeah we're gonna put this one over here and if anyone comes near it they're dead <laughs> thank you Sergio all right the rest of the show is all downhill I got what I wanted <laughs> Let's see now, uh, there's got to be something else that we can... Gru? Gru? Oh my God, of course! Like Gru, your, your biggest, most popular thing today. Well, this is the, the character. Um, uh -huh. It's very simple. To Spelled G-R-O-O. -O, yeah, Gru. Marvel comic book, written and drawn by you with copy by Mark Evania, and it's been a great seller now. How long have you been doing, Gru? Uh, We're in issue 84, so right. that's one a month. 84 months has it been that long? That's now. right, without missing an issue. Now, Gru is a cartoon version of a bar of really Conan the Barbarian, well, but he's a little bit dumber. Yeah, it is. More uh, lovable, perhaps. It is on the genre of, 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 of Conan, he's a barbarian. has nothing to do with Conan. No, or, I know. Uh, but it is on the same genre like uh, any other people who live on the jungle. It's on the genre of Tarzan, even if he's not a... Uh-huh. And... Uh, what I've been trying to, to do with Gru is to show that violence doesn't pay. He's an ignorant barbarian who doesn't know how to read and write. That's why he never succeeds. And uh, all the issues here, at the end, he loses whatever he's trying because he doesn't, he's not educated. He, he just fights. And basically, and you see, people think of it as just a funny strip, a funny comic book. Mm -hmm. They don't realize the deep significance because you're also showing how important education is Very in the important. world in which we live. And they don't realize it's a great social document and a commentary on today's uh, political situation and social mores and so forth. And they don't realize you're more of a social scientist well, than it, a cartoonist. It's a good vehicle for it. <laughs> I'm doing an issue right now uh, that, that criticizes television. Uh -huh. of the people spending too much time on it. But they were not television on the time of group. So how are you doing it? How are you puppets. getting puppets. Oh, it's that's a puppet great. show. That's great. So the puppet show works as a... And you have couch potatoes watching yes, the puppets? everything, yes. Uh, the yeah. people who, want, instead of doing their own life, they, yeah. they are watching yeah. puppets. So to do puppets, you have to go into research on how the puppets are manipulated, get a book on Boon Raku and uh, Indian... And, uh, by the time you're doing research, you get educated in, in another field, which is wonderful. Also. Let's see what the puppets look. Can you do a puppet? No, of course. Let um, me show you how. Or can you get it right out of your own head? <laughs> <laughs> this was a, this is the puppeteer, you know, it's a, okay, who looks like this, and then he would put a puppet under his arm here, and it would be a rod puppet. <laughs> You know what's awful about you? The fact that you're so reluctant to do any artwork. It's just so difficult to get you to it. Uh, well, it's complicated. I'm so lucky that you're in the mood right now. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm sorry this is the puppeteer. This is the puppet. Well, looks like one of the Punch and Judy's. He's the, Punch, right? In a way. Yeah. That type. And in, uh, the problem with the cartooning is that there's no difference between a cartoon and a puppet. Both yeah, are cartoons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we were doing a satire or something, th this character should be very seriously drawn. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you see how well, simple... To me, these are seriously drawn. Like these, these make a great statement. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. The That's terrific. Here. And then, of course, we have to do the puppet stage. Uh-huh. You know another beautiful thing about doing cartoons like this? You can really make any statement you want within the framework of mm -hmm. these silly stories. I mean, you, you can have Gru... You can have a story where he comments on anything. The theme of it could be against um, bigotry and prejudice. That's it could right. be it's for it's a, it's something about homelessness. Well, and and you do it in a humorous way, and that gets the point across so beautifully. Yes, the, the issue I did about the homeless, uh -huh. uh, it was about a certain major of a town who says, please bring all the homeless to my town. We will take care of them. Gru literally takes the word and brings the whole... Caboodle over there, and it was. Uh, I'd done issues about garbage. About um, what was the theme of the garbage one? Filling a canyon. 
uh -huh. uh, filling a canyon with garbage? That's, that, the, the best solution of garbage is not having any garbage at all. That's uh -huh. the moral of the story. So Guru goes to all the facets of it, uh, filling, putting it in a canyon, recycling it. Uh, no solution. Burn it, yeah. throw it into the yeah. ocean. There's no answer. The answer is not Can't having get rid it. Of it. No, the answer is minimizing to yeah. the point that it, it, it is non-existent. But uh, so it's important to to use a comic, have fun, but at the same time have so something in your, to say. So in your own nutty way, in this strip, you're showing that violence accomplishes nothing, nothing. that we should not have garbage. That's, That's right. the best answer That's to right. the garbage right. problem. Well, and all of the social problems that you can tackle, you can really get them across in a humorous way. It is just a... It's a, 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 not a synonym, but it's just a, a vehicle grew to talk about whatever you yeah, want because yeah. you can place it in any period you want. Uh, grew also does about uh, one of the issues I did it's uh, called the island of felicidad the island of happiness. happiness it's yeah. just a perfect island and when grew arrives and when grew leaves that island has become our modern society they don't have fences they don't have money they don't have violence and they don't I have mean they didn't in the perfect. beginning no but, but when Guru arrives it start ruining everything just by changing something it's like a symbiotic uh, relation between all the island and he disrupting a little bit ruins everything you know even politics are born like that because suddenly leaders are born and coins are born everything is just a process of accumulation you know? do you remember the little discussion we had last night about politics and the problems in the urban ci in cities and everything. I think most people looking at your drawings would never know that Sergio Aragonis is really quite a deep thinker <laughs> and really quite concerned with, with issues today. And I, I think it's wonderful. And I think so many cartoonists and writers are. And it's so great if you can get your ideas across without making it seem as though you're preaching. Thing. Where it's done in an entertaining way. Now, who's this guy? Political. A politician. Right. He'd politician have right. to be. See, the, all politicians are drawn <laughs> one way. All militaries are drawn <laughs> one way. You know, like see, authority. Every, every, everything is in a cartoon. They're symbols. Everything is a cliche. Yeah, that's and right. And the problem is that we cannot get out of the cliches. A mortlet in in pantomime cartoon, when we talk about feminism and having this, is people ask me, why don't you draw a female doctor? So, well, the very simple is that we still associate if a woman in uniform as a nurse. So when I'm doing a gag and uh -huh. I put, I says, well, I'm going to be firm. I'm going to, instead of be a doctor, I'm going to use a female doctor. I don't use words. So suddenly when you see the gag, now your attention is directed to this character. Why is a woman and you lose the gag? Because you're paying attention to this I woman being a doctor. You mean if you get away from the cliché in a gag, it diverts the, the reader's attention. That's right. Yeah. In this particular case, I cannot get rid of that cliché. Society has to get rid of that cliché. Give me a more normal ground to work with. And when everybody understands that women are equal, then everybody will understand my job because I dress the, the, the doctor as, I a, gotcha. as a woman. You see? Now take notice, so. society. Don't <laughs> anybody try to change this man's work until no, you no, uh, clean up your own act first. When you remember draw, that. When you draw a cartoon, okay, a broken nose indicates bad guy. Uh -huh. that's, right, because that's right. Or a cauliflower ear. Yeah. If, if, I, if I draw a cartoon like this, we but absolutely he's not a bad guy. No, he, he's an accountant. That's right. But that guy could be the cruelest, meanest, murderous yeah. guy in the world. If we take a guy with a nose like this and a big chin like this... Oh, he's a pug. He's a pug. He's a policeman. If I change his hel uh, helmet, he'll be anything you want because you associate this with strength. That guy would be a doctor. And the Very funny nice. thing is this guy could be an accountant. This guy could be a gangster. Well, but all of us think in terms of symbols Sim and cliches, don't we? A uh, soldier? Yeah. A policeman, <laughs> you know? Anything tough. A boxer, you know? So, the, the cliches Sergio, is how we work. Why is it in movies, when you have a hero, you make him handsome? And when you try to get a villain, you get somebody who's unpleasant and ugly looking. Mm -hmm. Now, we know in real life, most villains look like you. They're lovely looking and they're evil and cruel. In fact, <laughs> I've never trusted you yes. since the minute I've met you. Yes. And as magnificent looking as I am, I might be a villain too. You never know, right? Point in case, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it is true. I, I wonder why we all think in such a cliched way. It, is it because of the cartoonists? Typecasting. Uh, they uh, know it's where the cartoonists Don't forget because cartoonists, the other area. No, 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 no. Cartoonists sort of started it. They had to give us the symbols to begin with. Well, cartooning is one of the earliest forms of uh, drawing, and cartooning has right. been going That's from right. the real beginning. 
be before the Egyptians. And this is the oldest career in the world. But yes. It, well, you wouldn't be as fast if you were doing it in the olden days, because there's no way you could chisel a cartoon on the wall of a cave this quickly. Although, One you'd ready. find a way. You'd find a way, I suspect. The, the, pr the, the process has eliminated everything. Before, a cartoonist had to do a lithograph of a uh -huh. newspaper. Uh -huh. So he had to do a lot of work on it, to spend the whole day doing the cartoon. Right. Now, with a new modern process, you have Xerox, you have faxes, and uh, th there's a more demand. The styles get simplified mm -hmm. also. Uh, storytelling get more simplified. There's so many things to do in Earth nowadays. Uh, everybody's in a rush. You cannot tell a long story. Even television hours have to become 30 minutes. Yeah. Because yeah. that short span is not that people are becoming more stupid. It's because there's other things to do, more and more things to do. And everybody has a shorter interest span now. It's harder to hold people's interest for a longer period of time. For instance, if you talk for more than two sentences, I have to get myself <laughs> back to what you... <laughs> Listen, I just thought of something. You have not yet drawn a female for us here, have you? And the whole world is waiting to see what an Aragonist female looks like. Well, and there are many types of them, I know. The, this, the, the, the females are anything you want. I mean, it could be a, a female like this, you know, which is more in in in, in style of a, of, a, of of a cartoon female. You know. Uh huh. <laughs> now, how about a glamour girl? Well, the glamour girl ju just put a little pocket knife. You know? It is incredible how you get the whole feeling in two lines. Ah, oh, that's just great. I promised I wouldn't use the word wonderful, but that's just wonderful. Now, it's a little girl female. Well, any, any age female, not to read. <laughs> if only it didn't come to you so with such difficulty. You know the awful thing about what you're doing? People are going to be watching you and they're going to go running to their desk and taking a magic marker and figuring, Jesus, I never realized I can draw like that. Yes. I mean, it's easy, and they'll try it. Absolutely. And they're going to get frustrated as possible. Well, it comes, as I said before, with practice. It's like playing the piano. Uh -huh. the, the, uh, the analogy is, you want to play the piano? If you sit on a piano, what's going to happen? You go clink, 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 and nothing happens. You practice eight hours a day, four hours a day, two hours a day. The more you practice, the better you become. Same thing with drawing. You sit on your piece of paper, you draw. Yeah. If you draw 10 minutes a day, it'll be better than if you don't draw at all. But if you draw it hours a day, you're going to become excellent. The more you draw, the better you become. The, m the better you become, the, the more you want to learn. The more you learn, the better you become. People like your work, they pay you, and suddenly you're a professional without even noticing it. That's the longest so speech a... I ever heard you make without taking a breath. That was absolutely wonderful. <laughs> now, <laughs> let me tell you, I, I, I'm going to tell you the problem I would have. That's, that's great. I would have a big problem because I know if I were to practice eight hours a day and devote myself to it for years and so forth, with my luck, I'd end up drawing like Michelangelo instead of like Sergio Aragonis. So mm. I still wouldn't make it. Well, yes, you would, because before I did cartoon, I drew like Michelangelo. <laughs> I had to change And you the had cartoon. to unlearn oh, all of that yes, stuff. Yes, I know the you? small it must and have been proportion. Difficult. It was yeah. terrible, terrible. Now, let me ask you, what if you tried to draw a serious face? I mean, if you tried to draw a superhero face the way it is in our comics, would you oh. be able to? Or would I, it, I doubt it's it very much. It's just not your style. It is no, not only is not my style, it becomes that uh, uh, it's, 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 there's certain proportions in, a, in, in, a, in an anatomy that you have to follow, you know, the, and, and muscles, and, uh, and that will be better the more you practice it. Don't forget that I spend at least eight hours a day just uh, drawing my cartoons, you know, so I, I Sergio, like a I want to tell you something. I think with about... 60 seconds practice, you could draw any superhero <laughs> strip in the business, no, but because that's great. No, it's, it's, it is also a matter of, of, of drawing the same thing over and over. You know that in China, there's people who are an artist, have uh -huh. to draw for three or four years bamboo. Yeah. And the yeah. only thing that men does right. is bamboo. That's right. You know, the, those uh, strokes for four years until bamboo is bamboo. And then they will tell him, well, now you can do bird. You know, he goes to another graduation. So, like, e every, every job and every career it needs, uh, needs practice. In China, if a guy doesn't live to be about 120 years old, never he never becomes it. a finished artist. No. Also, well, the, tr the, the craft, being an apprentice, being an officer, and being mm -hmm. a, a maestro, it has disappeared. 
because everybody wants instant gratification on their work. You know, the, when a cartoonist have a chance to, to practice? It's not, it's well, let me tell you, as far as I'm concerned, I think if you stick with it a little longer, <laughs> really keep practicing, you just may make it, Sergio. Mm, take and time. Listen, let me tell you, our time is up. Oh. But I've got to tell you, I have never had a better time. And I, I cannot thank you enough for being here. And I think it is very clear why we call this series the comic book greats. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay. Now,